After a massive wait, we finally got a new duelist, but this guy has a few twists that we didn't really expect. Iso's utility is far from standard, especially for what we see with Valorant, but we know as good as anyone that when an agent releases, it'll initially be very confusing to put all that info together and to learn the character. But fear not, we are here to compile a guide so dense and so informative that you'll never need to watch an ISO guide again. Let's dive into, arguably, Valorant's most interesting character release to date. The playstyle you'll develop after mastering ISO, it's a bit different than most duelists. Sure, you can play him as a solo fragger and entry king, but we see ISO shine more often when used as a supporting duelist and initiator hybrid. All of his utility is amazing at helping your team get into heavily guarded areas with ease. Be it retake, side hits, or a quick push down mid, ISO's utility has got your back. We're going to talk about how you can use your utility to support your team as well as support yourself in this guide. So get your learning goggles on and let's get started. Keep in mind, if you're looking to climb, by far the most important thing for you to master is the fundamentals. This goes far beyond things like crosshair placement and counter strafing too. It also includes things you probably don't even realize you're doing wrong, like peeking, spacing with teammates, or even just where you choose to stand. The players who are consistently able to drop 30 in their matches are masters of all these things. And you could be too now with our Aim God Masterclass. It's expertly designed to teach you all the fundamentals you need to know in just one course. Our goal is to have this course teach you everything you need to know, which is exactly why we're constantly updating it as users submit feedback. The game's always developing, and that's why our website is too. With new courses posted every single month, you can be sure that you're always ahead of the curve when it comes to your mechanics. On top of that, we also offer a rank improvement guarantee. So if you don't climb while using our service, you don't pay. We know it sounds insane, but our number one priority is to be a standing name in the community for years to come. And the only way to do that is to create the best product we can. Check it out using the link below. ISO's kit is jam-packed, with abilities unique to him and Duelist in general. Let's talk about his Undercut first. The Undercut is an ability very similar to Omen's Paranoia. It needs to be equipped and thrown in the same fashion. It also goes through walls. And did we mention he gets two of them? This ability will apply a debuff known as Fragile to any opponent it touches. This makes targets take double damage. It's a pretty large radius, and it'll apply the debuff for a total of 4 seconds to any target, including teammates. So make sure you're not hitting your your allies when you're trying to take sight. The undercut travels at 22 and a half meters a second, which is insanely fast. It has a fairly quick equip time of 0.8 seconds, so this can be used in a pinch. Not only does it equip fast, but you also get a slight buff to equip time after using it, so you can pull your Vandal back out lightning quick if needed. This absolutely bonkers ability has three primary uses. You can use this for your team, for yourself, and use it as an outstanding piece of combination utility. We'll talk about how to do each of these real quick. ISO is an initiator hybrid. Let's touch on that a little bit. Since your undercut can be used through walls, this can be very good to throw onto commonly played areas to help your team retake or hit site. You'll be throwing this ability while your jet dashes in or when your team's ready to sprint onto site. Here's a good example of how you can use it supportively on Haven Seaside. Using a well-placed undercut, your jet can deal double damage to the enemies on site after she dashes in, and this makes it exponentially easier for jet to clear angles and get frags. This is a pretty standard vulnerable. It's similar to using it like an Omen Paranoia and Ascent B main to take that space, except it can be a lot more deadly. If the utility applies double damage, this can be very useful when combined with a recon bolt to deal double damage through walls. You'll also be using this for yourself pretty often when fighting enemies. Well-placed undercuts combined with a quick swing can net you some pretty free kills. Since you have fast equip time after using this ability, don't be afraid to use it in a pinch when the enemy team is entering your site. Tuck yourself behind a box, throw the ability out as soon as the enemy executes, and go for a quick swing on players walking out for an easy side hold. Undercut is also extremely useful on eco rounds. I've been testing them a lot in Immortal and Radiant ELO, and I'll generally prioritize two undercuts and a fast fire rate weapon. Let's take the Classic for example. This weapon does 78 damage to the head. If you tag someone with Undercut, your Classic is now doing a whopping 156 damage per shot. That is a one-shot headshot to a fully armored opponent with a free gun. This ability is insane on eco rounds and will definitely win you a lot of rounds when used properly. Now, we should also talk about how good the ability is when combined with a well-placed Brimstone ult or even a Silva ult. 
Here's an example of how this can be used to dominate and shut down a push. Iso hears a push A main and comms to a Silva who's at the ready. Iso throws the undercut quickly, and Silva follows it up with his ultimate. Hunter's Fury will now deal double damage and one-shot anyone that Iso's hit with his undercut. The undercut is an absolutely insane piece of utility, and it's slept on by too many players. Having a double damage applying projectile in your back pocket, it can help you easily win so many fights. When you have this ability, make sure you're always looking for ways to assist either your team or yourself in fights that are about to happen. Moving on to ISO's signature ability, the double tap. Everyone's seen this ability, and people are quite conflicted on its efficacy when compared to Arena Dismiss. Now, these two abilities might look similar on paper, but in reality, they are the furthest thing from each other. Please note, you can activate this ability at any time, and it won't interrupt any other actions. You can use it while reloading or using other abilities, so it's very simple to use. After activating Double Tap, a focus timer starts. From there, you'll go into a flow state for 15 seconds. Upon killing a player or getting an assist, an orb will spawn for 2 seconds above the enemy's head, somewhere in this half crescent path. Upon shooting an orb, you gain the double tap shield. While the shield's active, you have a 25% increase to reload speed. This shield's primary function is to give the slight edge over an enemy player in the form of taking an extra tick of damage. The double tap shield also cannot be broken by fall damage, and it'll completely negate fall damage for ISO. This ability also requires you have a decent level of aiming proficiency, as you'll be quickly adjusting to the orb since it only lasts for 2 seconds. Note that your ISO shield has a larger hitbox than yourself, so they can shoot the shield if they see it before for you. This ability is not meant to be a get out of jail free card like Reina's. The ability is meant to give you a major advantage in your next gunfight. That extra bullet could save you from a potential operator shot, or even a raise ultimate. The reason that we're saying ISO shines as a secondary supporting duelist is because ISO can use his utility to help his team get onto site. From here, ISO can proceed to pop his double tap and fight on site with his team, getting easier shields than if he was the first duelist in. If you are entering onto site, chances are you'll get traded out even before getting a chance to shoot the orb that spawns in flow state. It's also important to note you want to prioritize your life over getting your double tap shield. That means if there is an enemy on your screen and an orb on screen, don't grieve for shooting the orbs. There's no point in losing your life trying to get a shield that absorbs one tick of damage. Anyways, backtracking a step. ISO does not equal Jet or Reyna. You can't play ISO like Jet and Reyna by swinging everything you desire. You lack the escapability you get with a Jet Dash or a Reyna Dismiss. But with ISO's unique kit, he's going to have a unique playstyle in turn that allows him to be a powerhouse second man on injuries. Contingency is a shield that is completely invincible. Upon casting this ability, it takes half a second to fully form. Now, once it's at full size, it lasts for four and a half seconds, absorbing all damage coming its way and also blocking vision. You also get a slightly faster equip time after casting this ability as well. And it has two primary uses, using it to protect yourself and your team defensively and using it to push aggressively and tank damage. We'll talk first about defensively protecting your team. Let's take, for example, A-Side Ascent. The spike is ticking down rapidly and the enemy team is doubled up on A main. Thankfully, your team has already gotten the spike to half, and then you realize you still have your contingency. You then throw your contingency towards enemy players in main, and they're powerless from stopping your Sova from sticking the rest of the spike. The contingency shield lasts four and a half seconds. The spike takes three and a half seconds to half. In perfect situations, the enemy team cannot prevent you from at least having the spike. A better example would be Seasight Haven, as it's almost impossible for them to do anything about this, aside from pushing through wall, giving you the advantage. The contingency also performs well when used offensively. You're generally going to want to use this when entering onto site. This will help your team get onto site more effectively in many scenarios. Has this ever happened to you? Your KJ is using Lockdown in B main. Once the lockdown's about to be completed, your team floods onto site, only to get shut down by a Sova with a recon dart spamming his Odin from spawn. Simply throwing your contingency is the perfect counter to this type of play from the enemy team. It'll also leave the enemy team scratching their head as to how they weren't able to spam you out. The contingency is an essential piece of utility to block off line of sight and damage from commonly played and commonly spammed angles. Just make sure you're not throwing it at your teammate while they're about to take a fight. This can cause the shield to pass in front of them at very bad times. Moving on now to his most insane piece of utility. We've got the kill contract. 
we've got a lot to say about this ultimate, and the community seems pretty split about how good it actually is. Just know, it is a lot better than people give it credit for. Upon equipping this ability, you were able to send it out and pull an enemy into your own little special mini game. This will also suppress enemies, meaning a jet with knives will lose her knives upon entering your domain. Take note, if you have a double tap shield active while entering your ultimate, you will still have it, giving you a massive advantage in this fight. Upon entering the kill contract 1v1, you'll automatically enter flow state. If you win the 1v1, be sure to shoot the orb at the end. Immediately upon entering, you're going to notice one thing. You spawn with two barriers. The enemy spawns with one. This means you can very effectively guess and pre-aim where the opponent will be. The enemy has a 50% chance of guessing which barrier you'll be behind once they drop. This statistically gives you a pretty big advantage over your opponent, making it a harder 1v1 for them as they're going to have to guess, whereas you have a pretty good idea of where to pre-aim. There are a lot of mind games you can do with the sound as well, like faking footsteps behind on barrier, then walking to the other, or just crouching to throw off their crosshair placement. The community seems pretty split. It's supposedly his ultimate, but you're forced to 1v1 inside of the ultimate. You don't need to win the 1v1 in order for it to be effective. Reason being, the enemy gets placed right back into their previous position when losing. So if you're in a 2v1 situation and your teammate's there, they can easily trade you out if you lose with no threat at all. This also means for the entirety of the time you're dueling the enemy, that's one less player that your team has to worry about. If you're attacking a site that's being held by two players, let's say a Cypher on B site who has a teammate heaven, not only does it make it a 4v1 for your team, it also suppresses the Cypher. This means the entire time you're 1v1ing the Cypher, your team can walk out without having to worry about any pesky tripwires. Hopefully by now you're starting to understand the implications of this insane ability. Let's take another situation that's just generally unwinnable and will dissect it. You're on Breeze versus a Viper in the 1v1 who's playing lineups. You have a general idea that Viper's in the commonly played lineup spot. Instead of playing the tap game with Viper, you pull her into your playing field. You essentially stop the Viper from playing lineups, and if you win the 1v1, you now win the round. In this instance, you're ripping the advantage away from Viper and making it yours. Did we mention he can also stop plant with a kill contract? If the enemy's running low on time and you need to stop the plant, just use your ultimate, pull them away from the site, winning you the round. Want even more cheeky things you can do with this insane ability? You can escape brimstone ults, raise ults, or any lethal damage that might be coming your way. If you have no escape route, his ultimate can save you. You can also pull the raise out of the fight if she's rocketing straight into your bomb site. So yeah, kill contract has so much application, it's just, it's insane. It's not always about winning the fight. Sometimes pulling that one player away or just giving you another chance at life, it's all you really need for an ability. Remember, an ultimate is simply there to help you secure a round. And thankfully, this one has so many insane applications, it doesn't even require a kill. We want to take a quick step back. Let's watch a few rounds from XTR to see how we can put it all together. Show me a target. Raise on site. Spike planted. No distractions. Making cover. Reloading. One drop. They're towards drop. Breaking down. Um, Sky's main. Sky was main. One enemy oh, remaining. In this first round, he's positioned in heaven as a retake scenario is about to happen. His vulnerable is out, waiting for tap. The second spike plant is heard as he throws his vulnerable at planter. Now, there's no way for him to capitalize on this, but if there happen to be any teammates making their way to site or retaking site, this can help them kill planter much easier. From here, XTR swings a bit wider onto site in order to look for a kill to start his double tap shield. The first kill is secured so he decides now would be a good time to back up and find a way to send an enemy player to his kill contract. This is a great play. Since the double tap shield is active, if he pulls someone into the ult, it's almost surely going to be a win. XTR sees Omen on the radar mid sight, and the ult whiffs. From here, the double tap shield is thankfully still active, so XTR throws his contingency, blocking off the angle Reyna was just peeking from. He uses this time to clear the majority of the spike site. 
Omen decides to peek only to meet an early demise and feed XTR a shield refresh. From here, an undercut is thrown at main, while dropping to potentially hit anyone that may peek him while he drops. The infos gain that one or both are towards CT spawn and a quick kill is landed on Killjoy. Notice how after getting the kill in this situation, XTR isn't instantly popping a shield refresh. He waits just a split second, solely for the purpose of holding the Sky who may peek him right away to trade the Killjoy. Once he realizes Sky won't be swinging, he refreshes his shield once again. This time, he swings wide to get a better angle on the tuck Sky and CT. In case Sky swings to fight his teammate but is met by a flash, he ducks back behind the wall to his right, taking a shot with his shield. Thankfully, Sky's more focused on getting a kill on the diffuser, so the ISO player comes out on top by getting the quick trade. These were some good examples of thinking and having a plan for every piece of utility thrown. XTR used his experience with the character to shut down and isolate areas of the spike site with his utility. We saw him use contingency to block off an angle to make clearing the rest of the site easier. We saw him use undercut twice in order to make planter vulnerable. The other undercut was used to cover him while he dropped down onto site. From there, he thought about where he could be swung from while refreshing his shield. This type of deliberate utility usage is essential if you want to play ISO at a higher level of play. Since we got to witness XTR whiffing his last ult, let's show him use it properly this time. Wait, just turn around, he's got a buggy. Show me his buggy. That's four. Or three, it's three. Uh, no no distraction. Uh, Someone cover my body. You got I got this. You. Nice ISO. The first thing we notice about this clip is Ray's popping her ultimate ability. You can see him taking his time and understanding where his team was and where his enemy is in this clip. He's not revealed, but the second the Sky Seeker reveals his location, he pulls out his kill contract, just in case he needs to use it. He hears people running up on him, and the second the Sky Flash comes in, he pops his ultimate, pulling himself and the Sky away into the ultimate. As he enters the kill contract, you hear the Ray shooting where he was. Even if he dies after this ultimate, he at least got one more before dying. He communicates to his team that his body will be in a dangerous position, and he needs help. This is vital if you're playing ISO. If you ult from a less than ideal position, your teammates need to try and secure your body before you win or lose the fight to ensure your safe return from the contract realm. It's important to notice how long XTR waited here. You've got quite a bit of time in this situation, and he made sure to use all of that time allotted to make the proper decisions. He scanned his radar, noticed he was the furthest up on his team, and that he was in the worst position. The second he was spotted, he pulled out the kill contract to ensure he wouldn't go down with at least having a chance at one here. Simply because he had his ultimate here and knew how to properly use it, he was able to get one in a situation where he almost should have never gotten one. Before we end today's video, we want to talk about the synergy of his utility just briefly to give you a bit more direction before hopping into this absolutely wild character. Let's take a look at the combination of utility you should be using the most, the undercut and contingency combo. This dynamic duo can effectively do one thing, isolate an angle for your team and place double damage effects on the other angles. By throwing your wall, you block off line of sight from the enemies that might be looking to swing from bottom plat or default. By throwing your undercut, double damage can be dealt to anyone playing close or locks, and this is a major disadvantage for the enemy team. From this point, you can activate double tap and enter onto site with your team. You can trade your teammates and get a shield almost for free. It's now with 3v3. When the enemy team goes to retake, you can throw another undercut and take fights with your team, or you can wait for him to be on spike and pull him into your ultimate. Even if you lose, your team should still be able to trade you if they ended up pulling the defusing player. And with a little bit of practice, you can easily replicate sight takes like this in your games. Iso's an amazing duelist. He just doesn't compare to Jet and Reyna, as he has a very different playstyle from most duelists. And to properly judge his efficacy, people need to realize that first and foremost. Don't treat Iso like a run it down king, that's not what he is. When played properly, he can shine in aspects that a traditional duelist probably wouldn't. We hope you've gathered a lot of useful information on ISO from this guide, and also gained some direction on how he should actually be played, as there's a ton of misinformation floating around on his playstyle. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little bit more about Skill Capped. So we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and we think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's kind of like getting a gym membership that guarantees you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered you that, but not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work. 
It works so well, in fact, that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium Valorant guides on the entire internet. We add new courses every month with over a thousand guides curated into over 50 courses, so no one can compare. We also have a direct line of communication with subscribers in our Discord, so you can get connected immediately to some of the best players in the game, who will respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you're serious about improving. So that's going to be all for this one today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.